Africa. Thanks for joining me on Issues and Answers. I am Julita Peter and with me is Dr. Zent Dobizo, Head of Certification at the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. And over the next 20 minutes, our discussion will focus on World Accreditation Day. Dr. Dobizo, thanks for joining me on the program. Thanks for having me. Every year, the world uh, marks June 9th as World Accreditation Day. And here in St. Lucia, your agency, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, spares activities to raise awareness of um, accreditation. What really is accreditation? Okay, um, basically what happens is that um, most persons, they use the word certification and accreditation um, together. And I'm hoping that by the end of this interview that persons would have a better understanding of what accreditation is. It's really a process by which um, formal recognition is given by an independent third party that a conformity assessment body is competent to carry out the activities that it is carrying out. Um, and when I say conformity assessment body, I'm speaking about inspection bodies, certification bodies, and certification bodies, they certify products processes, services, and even persons. The SLBS, we do process, product, and service certification. We do not do certification of persons. Another example of a conformity assessment body is a laboratory. And you have different kinds of laboratories. You have medical laboratories, and you also have testing and calibration laboratories. So as I said, it's basically a process where those entities receive recognition that they are competent to carry out their activities. Now, as the agency is spearheading uh, the observance of World Accreditation Day, which is on June 9th, what is really your role in that process? The, over the last 10 to 15 years, the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality, CROSQ, what they have done is to establish what you call national accreditation focal points within the various CARICOM countries. And most of these focal points rest within the different Bureau of Standards. And um, the SLBS is the National Accreditation Focal Point. And over those last years, um, through, of course, the use of um, funds from the EU, what they have done is to train those focal, those persons within the focal points and um, the focal point, what it does is to provide support, of course, to the various conformity assessment bodies that want to um, receive accreditation. And um, it's a one, it's within the Bureau, it's within the certification departments. And um, having been trained in the requirements of some of the standards, we are more or less equipped to provide information, which is why we have in the training, which we'll speak about later. Um, to raise awareness on what accreditation is, why the need for accreditation, the importance of accredit accreditation. In order for an organization, for example, to become accredited, what are some of the prerequisites? What is, what, uh, uh, what is the standard really looking for, the Bureau of Standards? Okay. Well, to become accredited, it depends on the type of body you are. If you're a laboratory, um, there are two standards, international standards. The laboratories are to be guided by a medical laboratory, there's um, ISO 15189, and for testing and calibration laboratories, it's another standard, it's 17025. If you're an inspection body, there's another standard. If you're a certification body, there's 17065. Um, the Bureau of Standards, um, our certification body, we, are, we work, of course, in keeping with the requirements of that particular standard. So to become certified, of course, you would first of all have to know what the standard requires, which one applies to you, what it requires. 
you would have to implement the requirements of that particular standard. And once you've done so, of course, you can through the National Accreditation Focal Point at the SLBS. You can seek assistance as to which um, accreditation bodies you can use for that purpose. Now, why would you say um, accreditation being given so much prominence? Um, accreditation, it's, uh, it's very important um, because what it does, it more or less ensures that there's integrity, impartiality, and competence in carrying out your various activities. It also facilitates trade because, as you know, um, with the testing and calibration laboratories, if a product is tested and has to be exported, if it, the testing is done by an accredited laboratory, once tested, accepted everywhere. So when that product is exported, the manufacturers do not have to undergo another cost of the product being retested overseas. Um, it's important um, in that different regulators as well use accreditation. And there are various interesting examples throughout the world. Um, I can give a few, like in Dubai, for example, um, lifeguards they have to be certified in order to work on the beaches. And so that certification has to come from a certification body that is accredited to performing certification of persons. If you look at in the UK, again, um, when it comes to asbestos, you know, the use of asbestos in commercial entities, um, the inspection bodies who actually do the inspections of those buildings, they have to be certified to doing that sort of inspection activity. When tests are being done for asbestos, the test has to be done by an accredited laboratory as well. So there are quite a few examples of mm -hmm. um, the use of accreditation internationally. Is it possible that a person or an organization can become um, delisted from the accreditation list or be stripped off that sort of certification? And what would give rise to that occasion? Um, well, definitely, because to become certified, of course, you have to be, to become accredited, you have to be guided by a particular standard. Now, what the, accred the accreditation bodies do is that they would go in and they would assess that body, be it a lab, be it an inspection body, be it a certification body, they would do the assessment against the requirements of that particular standard. Mm -hmm. And once certified, of course, that body would undergo what you call, every year, they would have to undergo an assessment. Now, if within the certification year, you have various complaints mm -hmm. about that entity, um, different things, um, various complaints, um, if, for example, um, an audit, um, sometimes they may do surprise audits as well. So if a surprise audit is carried out and they recognize that they're not in keeping mm -hmm. with the requirements of the standard, of course they can be um, delisted. And most accreditation bodies, they would actually, if you go on their website, they would actually list those um, organizations that have received accreditation. Now we're looking at um, the topic of capacity and that is that often comes up. Mm -hmm. um, how much capacity is there uh, in St. Lucia to support organizations um, in accreditation? Well, I must say over the last, again, 10 to 15 years, mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of focus on medical labs where through the National Accreditation Focal Point and even through CrossQ, there was a lot of training. A lot of mm -hmm. personnel from those labs received training. Um, sometimes it would require traveling to different countries mm -hmm. to receive that particular training, um, be it on the requirements of the standard. Um, and um, also, we have um, collaborated. Sometimes we make presentations on what accreditation is. Um, so that support mechanism is there. If, um, of course, we are not experts in everything, so if there's a need for a particular area that the labs are finding problems with, like measurement uncertainty is a very complicated issue, which I myself, I really don't understand. Um, but we can source personnel from the different Caribbean um, countries because it's a whole network of support that, ha that does exist within the CARICOM countries, of course, through CrossQ and funds from the 
um, European Union. Well, we are due for a break now. You are watching Issues and Answers. The program returns after the break. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. You are watching Issues and Answers and my guest is Dr. Zenth Dubizor, Head of Certification at the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. Dr. Dubizor, the SLBS, as the name implies, is primarily concerned with the um, standards on ensuring that goods and services comply with international regulations. And of course, accreditation is very much part of your mandate. How much work has, um, has been, um, how much work has gone into uh, accreditation on the island? Well, first of all, we don't um, have an accreditation body in mm -hmm. St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And even through the work of CrossQ, um, of course, we're trying to look at how resources can be efficiently utilized. So there's no need to have an accreditation body within every country. So what CrossQ has done is to establish two accreditation bodies um, in Trinidad and in Jamaica. And this is in an effort to reduce the cost of becoming accredited because to become accredited when you apply to the accreditation bodies those persons sometimes come all the way from the US they come from different areas from Europe and so to reduce that cost those two accreditation bodies have been established within the region you know to reduce the cost of um, mm -hmm. accreditation and so um, at the SLBS um, the NAFP is there National Accreditation Focal Point to provide whatever assistance is necessary. And as I said, if we do not have the information, if a lab requests mm -hmm. a specific information, we would actually, through our networking, source that information. Um, we can tell you which accreditation body, for example, mm -hmm. has received what you call mutual recognition because, of course, you have the accreditation body who would oversee the labs, the certification body, the inspection bodies. Mm -hmm. So we ask the question now, who will look at mm -hmm. the accreditation mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. So there's a process of peer assessment. So the different accreditation bodies throughout the world, they do what you call peer assessments of each other so that each accreditation body will carry out the same activity in the same, the same way. Mm -hmm. you, you have uniformity mm -hmm. in right. procedures, in the way things are done. And believe you, there's a, there are various standards for everything. They are actually guided mm -hmm. by a particular standard. And um, so recognizing that, of course, there's no need to set up one in mm -hmm. St. Lucia because, of course, it wouldn't be cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, that support is there at the Bureau for the labs if they wish to um, seek accreditation. That's very good. So there's close collaboration between your organization and, and cross oh and yes. related organizations. Definitely. Now let's um, speak about the upcoming observance, which is on June 9th, World Accreditation Day. What are some of the activities that the Bureau will be undertaking to mark that observance? Okay, the, the activity on June 14th, we have in a awareness training for testing and calibration labs. And we're targeting them because last year we targeted the medical lab. So this year we're focusing on testing and calibration labs. So we have invited um, both laboratories from the private and the public sector and the reason that we have done that, chosen those labs, is because um, we have a national diagnostic facility that's soon to be completed. And so we recognize the need, of course, um, we preach quality. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something right, mm -hmm. you start doing it right the first Very time. Well. So which is why we actually 
sensitizing them to the requirements of the standards so that mm -hmm. when they start working, they could start working with the standard, start implementing it. And so the training, it's a one-day training, of course, hosted by the SLBS. And um, that particular standard, ISO 17025, it's particular requirements for the competence of testing and calibration lab. So it focuses on what a lab, how a lab needs to operate with the end goal of having accurate and reliable tests. And so it looks at um, the environment, the lab environment. It looks at um, the suitability of the equipment that they use, how the equipment is maintained. It looks at um, things related to the measurement, um, traceability of measurements and whatever calibration data that they use, the competence of the personnel as well, um, quality assurance that's been done. So the standard touches on that, as well as um, we're going to focus on, uh, there's what you call a, a stepwise improvement process, that if a lab wishes to seek accreditation, mm -hmm. this is how, these are the steps that you take. So it more or less, you know, makes it, this, the process easier, instead of being um, overwhelmed with the standard and not knowing what to do. So we would also focus on that during the training. Mm -hmm. Now, you've articulated the importance of accreditation and the role of the Bureau mm -hmm. in that regard. What sort of challenges um, are you confronted with in terms of um, getting people to embrace the importance of uh, accreditation? Okay, the problem or the challenge that we actually have in, and we recognize the need for regulators to understand what accreditation is and how they could actually use accreditation to make their work easier. Um, for example, let's give a, an example like um, you would have a regulator that's responsible, say, for monitoring water quality. Now, a way accreditation can be used is that if the water is being tested, then the lab needs to become accredited so that you as a regulator will not have to do too much monitoring mm -hmm. to, you know, to verify that the lab is doing what it's supposed to be doing and that you can actually rely on those results coming out of the lab. Um, sometime two weeks ago, we had a session um, on the, really the use of standards as far as um, establishing technical regulations and whatnot. And so I guess in the future, um, the SLBS would definitely be looking at how we could target those regulators, um, government for example, um, and the way that they can actually use standards to make work easier for them. And that would go for uh, all the, also for the private sector as well as um, Yeah, definitely. Agencies? Yeah, because you have private labs, you have mm -hmm. private um, inspection bodies. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we don't have private certification bodies here in Solution. The only certification body mm -hmm. is at the Bureau of Standards. And so we do have a lot of work still to do um, where accreditation is concerned. No doubt. Um, we are running out of time, so perhaps you would want to um, say a few final words. Um, well, as far as the, the day is concerned, the observance of World Accreditation Day and your own role as the Bureau of Standards in ensuring that more persons come on board yeah so next week is just um the beginning of um a very i guess important activity we would have the training with the labs and of course there would be follow-up mm -hmm. um so if the lab needs added assistance um, we would try to walk them through the process um, of accreditation and I am hoping that, of course, all the labs that we have invited, because we are trying to have an attendance of about 20, 25 persons. Okay. So I'm hoping that everybody recognizes the need. And the training is for free, so I mean, why not? So we have already invited those persons to attend. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that we would have a successful activity next week. And it will just be the start of something very important. Thank you, Dr. Dubizo. Well, we've exhausted our time on issues and answers today. Awesome. My guest uh, has been Dr. Dubizo, who is head of certification at the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, uh, who so ably educated us on the importance of accreditation and the role of the Bureau in that regard. I also want to thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Julita Peter.